First Kings chapter 13, rebellion. 13 in the Bible is rebellion. This is one of them chapters. And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah. Now remember, the nation has been split. Jeroboam is the northern, ten tribes. God sends from Judah into Israel north. And Jeroboam's whole tactic is, if I make these golden calves, if I make this religion, they won't go down to Jerusalem, and they won't get right, and I'll be king, and they won't kill me. Out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. So he's got an imitation of everything that God has. Altars, priests, sacrifices, but they're not what God has prescribed. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord. I, I don't know if that would mean boo-hoo-hoo-hoo or yelling. He's preaching. Oh, what you do, preach on the street. It would, nowhere in the Bible does this happen. If this guy is crying out with his voice, he's in some open spot where there's an altar and for everyone to hear him with a loud voice. Thus saith the Lord. He, he cried against the, the altar in the word of the Lord and said, O altar, altar. <laughs> He's speaking to that altar. The one Jeroboam's altar. Thus saith the Lord. Now, can you imagine that? You ever see the prophets of the, of the Lord in the Old Testament? Go to the forest and preach them. Go to the mountains and, and tell the mountains such. This guy is called to go from Judah all the way to Bethel. And I want you to go up to that altar and I want you to say, altar, altar. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David. We're in the north. We are not amongst Judah. Josiah, and this will come to be in 2 Kings 23. We will see this prophecy come to be. With Jos uh, Joash, excuse me. Josiah. Yeah, Josiah. This prophecy will happen in 2 Kings 23, spoken about now, by name. So here is one of the few men, Isaac, Jesus, John, I'm trying to think, uh, Joah, Josiah. There are men in the Bible that God pre-named before they were even born. And this is way pre-named. This is not talking to Mary, you're going to have a son, call his name Jesus. Uh, Zacharias, you're going to have a son, call his name John. Uh, Abraham, because you and Sarah laugh, name your son Isaac, which means laughter. Now, Joab, this is 1 Kings uh, 13. We're looking at 2 Kings 23, and let me just get a date there real quick. You don't need to go. I'm, I'm going home just to get a date. 2 Kings 23. I'm just going to go over here and get a date. How long? So 23, approximately 624 B.C., and we have 975 B.C. So this rough math, 300 years rough. That's real rough. Don't go with that. 300 years. That's a lot of grand, 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 grandparents, parent, and here's your son, Josiah. By name. Well, that's really prophecy. That is, not only is it going to be Josiah, but it's going to be of the house of David. Man, this is a type of Jesus Christ. 48 prophecies about one man, and they all happen to be. Well, here we go. See, this is God 100%. Now, your modern seances, uh, palm beer, there will be a child born. <laughs> Sometime, somewhere, any like that, and blah, 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 and he's going to get married, and so what? How about a name? How about a sex of the child? How about a, a family of 12, 12 tribes? And I assume that Judah has a lot more names than Jesse and David. By name. Upon thee. The altar, the, the altar, shall he offer the priest of the high places that burn incense unto thee. Now let's come back to over chapter 12 real quick. Verse 31. 
And he made a house of high places, there it is, and made priests of the lowest of the people, which were not the sons of Levi. So the priests he's talking about here are any priest, anyone, just hired to be like a certain church. And this guy, Josiah, is going to come and he's going to destroy the high places and he's going to take the bones of those priests, the false priests, and he's going to burn them. And we'll find that exactly in 2 Kings 23. And men's bones shall he burn upon thee, and he will. And he gave a sign. Jews require a sign. 1 Corinthians 1.22. Jews require a sign. The same day. Now, Jeroboam is a, is a Jew. Jeroboam is standing there. He's watching this guy preach to the altar. He's not preaching to Jeroboam. He's preaching to that altar. And he says, there's going to be a sign. Speaking for the Jews that are there. The same day, saying, this is the sign which the Lord has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, split in pieces, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. This is the truth of the prophecy 300 years before it happens. And again, that's rough math. 300 years. It came to pass when the king Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which he cried against the altar in Bethel, preaching against the altar, got mad. He's preaching against his altar. That's my altar. How dare you do that? Come walking in here. That'd be like me going to Catholic church and going up there, stand at the bulb and start pe preaching to people the truth of the Bible. How oh, dare you do that? You need to get out of here. I need to teach the people the truth. You can't do that, I guess, today. And he put forth his hand from the altar. So evidently, he's still working on that altar. His hand was doing something on that altar, and he picks up his hand from the altar, saying, lay hold on him, like pointing to him. And his hand, which he put forth against him, dried up, swiveled up. Uh, there's no light. So he could not pull, that's the first time that word shows up, pull it in again onto him. So his hand is stretched out, uh, uh, mega case of arthritis. <laughs> Mega case, the thing is dry. How about that for a sign? <laughs> but that's not the sign that he said was going to happen. The altar also was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign. That, that's remarkable. There are two miracles here. Here a guy, he's doing something with the altar. I have no idea. He pulls in, rest. Hey, what's wrong with my hand? What the? Ah, ah, hell. And then at that moment, and the Bible doesn't say what did it, that altar splits into two. And the ashes are poured out. See? The altar also ran, and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king answered, How did that altar split? It had to be God. As soon as the king took his hand off to, to, to put the, the, the orders for that man of God to arrest him, to get him out of here, oh, I can't bring him back. And then that altar just splits right open. That's a sign. Again, fulfilled. The, the child Josiah in 2 Kings 23. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of the Lord thy God. Don't ever go when somebody comes up to you and say, well, if I had a sign from God, if I had something from God, if God would show me, if God would work a blessing in my mind, it does not change who you are. This guy is in complete terror, Jeroboam. He cannot have function of his arm anymore. It does not say what it is, left or right. If it's his right hand, man, that's the hand he does everything with. And it's, whatever, which one, it's completely useless. Here's a man of God. He just said that your altar is going to rent in pieces and ashes coming out. There it is. It's definitely a miracle of God, a sign to a Jewish person. 
Now, I want you to think that Jeroboam would be like, can, can God and I get right right now? <laughs> because God is definitely working with you, and he ain't working with me. Look at my arm. And the words that come from him, thy God. Jeroboam has not repented, has not gotten right with God. And pray for me. Why can't you pray? Why can't you repent and get right? Where are your priests? Why don't you go in the little closet over and say, Hunga uh, uh, Bunga, I disobeyed God and I hired you guys. I shouldn't hired you. I had this complete, uh, this, this church system of traditions. I'm wrong. Where's his priest? Where's his altar? Oh, his altar's rent. His religion has been split into two. You know, another time that, that something will be split in two is the veil when Jesus dies. He says, pray for me that my hand may be restored me again. It's not coming back right now. And the man of God besought the Lord, Jehovah, and the king's hand was restored him again. And became as it was before. Now you would think, okay, now definitely. I'm going to serve God and we can get right. By the time we get to this end of this chapter, you're going to say, no. And I have heard people tell me, if I got a sign, if I blah, 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 fill in the blanks. And every time you see God work like that in the Old Testament, I can never say I've heard the voice of God. And if I do, you need to lock me up. But there was an entire nation under Moses and Aaron at, at uh, Mount Sinai in Exodus 19. They heard the voice of God and they had 40 years in the wilderness still cry, babying, griping, and complaining against God. Let's go back to Egypt. How's that? They have Jesus Christ right there amongst them. He is God manifest in the flesh. And they get angry because he heals somebody on a Sabbath day. Thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. Things are just in complete utopia. Everything is wonderful and great. Thousand years is up. Satan is loose and he gets himself a vast army to go against Jesus before God descends. You're gone. It's the man's heart. Jeremiah says it's wicked. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me and refresh. That's the first time that word shows up. Reflect, refresh thyself. And I will give thee a reward. He has not repented. He is not getting right. He does not want God. And he's, I'll give you, a it's for his arm. That's what it's for, not for repentance. I got use of my arm again. And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thy house, I will not go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place that would be Bethel. For so, now watch this, for so was it charged by me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. You come in from the south, you leave by the north. You came from the east, you go out by the west. Don't you go back to the east. Don't you go back to the south. Don't you eat anything, don't you drink anything in Bethel. Now, why? I don't know. But that's the order of God. God gave this man, he gave him, go to that altar, preach against it, and don't you dare stay. You go, get out, and leave. So he went another way and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. Obedience. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel. Now, we're not told time here. Is this prophet... A Lord? Or is he a Jeroboam prophet? And his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. Dad, Dad, you won't believe what happened. Whatever. And the words which he had spoken unto the king, then they told also to their father. And the father said unto them, What way went and he? For his sons had had seen what way for had, sons had seen what way the man of God went which came from Judah and he said unto his sons 
Now, I love this play on words. Because who this guy is going to be, uh, saddle me the ass. Okay, that's a donkey. So they saddled him the ass. I know there's no comma there. But what this guy is doing is going to be ass like. And he rode thereon and went after the man of God and found him sitting under an oak. That's interesting. How many places in that oak will show up in the Bible? An oak is a good shade tree. When you're desert climate of hot sun, an oak is a wonderful tree. Daytona Beach has not followed the Bible yet to have oaks. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that cameth from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. The second offering for a fellowship meal. Come, let's have a fellowship. He said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee. Neither will I eat bread, nor drink water with thee in this place. Bethel. So he's got the same orders. He knows what his orders are. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, that thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. Same exact thing. He knows what the word of God said. He knows what he's supposed to do. He knows what he's not supposed to do. And he said unto him, I am a prophet, also as thou art. And the angel spank unto me by the word of the Lord. Angel spank unto me. You mean Michael, Gabriel, Moroni, Baloni? Many religions have or profess an angel has started their thing. There's been a revelation that an angel met with me when I was doing this. An angel, I saw an angel, blah, blah, angels. That is the, the form of Islam, Gabriel, and Michael. The Mormons, Boloni, or Morori, or Moron, whatever that is. The Roman Catholic Church, angels here, angels there. They even claim to have the feathers of Michael, the archangel, which he doesn't have feathers. I don't know how you can have it. New Age gets into angels. I talked to one guy one time uh, when I, in Norwich where I live, and I learned a lot of things from him. Wicked things. But as far as the realm of, of New Age and angels, and to them, there's just angels everywhere. This is not an angel of God, because when he says, an angel spank unto me, it's all a lie. And the Holy Spirit will record that. The angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thy house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But the Holy Spirit, P.S., but he lied unto him. You better, John says, I think it's First John, you better weigh the spirits. You better test the spirits. Just because someone is a pastor, because someone is a prophet, somebody's a priest, somebody is a man of God, you better test them out because they can lie to you according to the scriptures. This guy says, I'm a prophet, and the Holy Spirit says he lied. He came in the name of an angel. Now, I believe in angels. Hebrew says, you know, you can entertain angels unawares. I believe Cornelius was visited by an angel. I know that God can use angels today. But when an angel is said to do something that prescribed against the word of God, it's a lie. Because God told this man, do not eat, do not drink, do not go back. And as, as soon as this prophet hears that, well, I'm going to reverse it. This prophet should have sought God right away. So he went back with him. There's no prayer. There's no seeking God. And did eat bread in his house and drank water. That's what he was told not to do. And it came to pass as they sat. And I think it says over here. Uh, yeah, verse 11. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel. He was told nothing to do with Bethel, preach against that altar, and go. He is definitely going against the word of God. And it came to pass as they sat at the table. The word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back, the liar, the false prophet. God uses him now. 
Now, isn't that interesting? A lying prophet, and God's going to use him to speak the truth. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, For as much as thou hast disobeyed, that's the only time that word shows up, disobeyed. God is rebuking the man of God by the false man of God by exactly what they both did, disobeyed. The mouth of the Lord. And has not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded. Don't you dare eat or drink or stay there. But came his back. So evidently he left Bethel. And has eaten bread and drunk water in the place. Of which the Lord did say unto thee, eat no bread and drink no water. Three times that's recorded. <laughs> that's important. Thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulcher of thy fathers. You're going to die in the land. <laughs> You're not going home. And it came to pass after he had eaten bread, and after he had drunk, that he saddled for him the ass to wet the prophet whom he had brought back. And he was gone. A lion met him by the way. Lions are all over the place. And slew him. And his carcass was cast in the way. And the ass stood by it. And the lion also stood by the carcass. Now this is a funny picture. I had my daughter draw it for me. Here on the side of the road is a dead man. There's an ass. A donkey. And there's a lion. Still the body. Now it said when a lion is hungry will eat all including the bones and it's an interesting fact that if it's a human the heel or the shoulder blade is left but he'll eat everything else but the heel or the shoulder blade that's what i read lions don't usually attack just to attack for the fun of it they will get a whole pack or whatever they're called or whatever you call them and they go after meat to feed their clan. This lion has killed for the sake of killing, and he wasn't hungry because the, the body's still there, and he hasn't attacked the ass. And behold, the men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way. The lion even threw the body out of the way. And the lion standing by the carcass, and they came and told it in the city. Where the old prophet dwelt. So here comes the news. Here comes the media. Live on the spot. We saw this dead body in a lion. No one feared that lion. They just walked by it like. Doo -doo 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 -doo. This is a miracle in itself. That lion has only attacked one person. And it's like they're standing there. With the dead body. Laying there like. We're waiting for that idiot prophet to come. That's a miracle. At no time did that lion have a dinner or call the lioness or the lion cubs. And when the prophet that brought him back, that's the liar, from the way heard thereof, he said, it is the man of God who was disobedient. That's the first time that word shows up unto the word of the Lord. You are the cause of it, idiot. Oh, that guy was disobedient to the word of the Lord. Thank you to you. If you kept your mouth shut, if you would stay at home where you belong, this would never have happened. Wait till you can stand before God one day. Therefore, the Lord has delivered him unto the lion, which has torn him. Now see, he's got half the story. He's played the telephone game. That lion didn't tear him, just killed him. But the story's been extravagant, it's been made more important, so, you know, it'd be a, a story worth telling. And slain him, that part's true. This guy's a liar, according to the word of the Lord which he spake unto him. And he spake to his sons, saying, saddle me the ass, and they saddled him. That's twice as mentioned. And if I may say, when people get, the guy was an ass for getting this guy in trouble. 
And he had the nerve to say that he was disobedient to the word of the Lord. You were disobedient by saying the angel spoke to me and told me to bring you back. And he went and found his carcass cast in the way. And the ass and the lion standing by the carcass. Hey, how you doing? This is exactly what you said was going to happen. That's a miracle. That's a sign. And the lion had not eaten the carcass, nor torn the ass. Now, did you see that? Had not eaten nor torn the ass. But he said, oh, it's been torn in pieces and all that. No, you're a liar still. Shut up. And the prophet took, uh, took up the carcass of the man of God and laid it upon the ass and brought it back. And the old prophet came to the city to mourn and to bury him. So see, he's not going home to his family. And he laid the carcass in his own grave. I know somebody who, had, who was buried in a cave that was not his own. And they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my brother. Jewish. Jewish. And it came to pass after he had buried him, that he spake to his son, saying, When I am dead, then bury me in the sepulcher wherein the man of God is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. You're getting a little creepy here, buddy. It's freakish. What, do you, what is the point that you're going to be buried right next to this guy? You're the one that killed him. For the saying which he cried by the word of the Lord against the altar in Bethel and against all the house of the high places which are in the cities of Samaria, and surely come to bed. So now look, now look at Samaria. It's got all kinds of high places, churches, steeples, up on hills. Check out location of a lot of your churches. Hilltop. All right, now back to Jeroboam. After, these thing, after the, this thing, Jeroboam returned not from his evil way. You mean after God did that to his arm and his arm is healed? And after the sign that his altar is going to be rent in pieces? He probably put it all back together. It didn't change his heart. But made again the lowest of the people priests of the high places. There he goes. He's hiring people. You want to be a priest? You want to be a priest? Come to my seminary and, and we'll, we'll get you going sinning and all that. We'll, 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 we'll just train you to be a priest. How whosoever, I mean, lowest of the people, priests of the high places, whosoever would, would he consecrated him? Whosoever would he consecrate him? So anybody who would come up and say, hey, I want to be a priest. I want to be one of your priests. Sure. And whatever they do, fee, five, four, thumb, smack you in the head. I don't know what they did. You became one of his priests. According to the law, you had to be born of Abraham. You had to have been born, uh, not Abraham, yeah, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. You had to be born of Levi. And to be the, the priest of the priests, you had to be of Aaron. All priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests. This guy, anybody, I guess, as long as you're Jewish. And, be, and he became one of the priests of the high places. So he made himself priest. I want to be called himself Father Jeroboam. Hey, I'm making everybody priest. I'll make myself a priest. And this thing became sin. That's number two time that you're going to see. Uh, many times it's going to show up. And he's talking about those calves. This thing became sin unto the house of Jeroboam. That is That will be in reference to those golden calves. Even to cut it off. And to destroy it from off the face of the earth. So making your own priest, having your own religion, having your own altar makes God very angry. 